Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with sweet potato biscuits. That's right, we've done sweet potato muffins and sweet potato rolls. So I thought I would complete the handheld sweet potato baked goods trilogy with what turned out to be these amazing biscuits. And this was originally intended to be something you could do with leftover sweet potatoes after Thanksgiving dinner. But these came out so well. Now I'm thinking you should cook some sweet potatoes ahead of time and make these to serve along with your turkey. But either way, we're going to need some cooked sweet potatoes. So I'm going to go ahead and peel this orange fleshed variety, which is generally sold in the grocery store as a yam. But it's really not. It's simply an orange variety of sweet potato. I think that was simply a marketing thing. But anyway, once we have that peeled and the tips trimmed off, we'll go ahead and cut that in half using sort of a rocking motion. And I do that because the texture is kind of brittle and it tends to fragment. So kind of a slow rocking motion works best for me. And then once halved, we'll go ahead and cut those pieces in half. And then in half again. And then yes, you guessed it, each of those pieces in half. But because we're working with something that has sort of a tapered shape, we'll want to cheat our cut up a little bit towards the big end, which will hopefully help cook these slightly differently shaped pieces evenly. And by the way, since I have no idea of the size and shape of your sweet potato, you might need to cut yours in a different number of pieces, but that's fine. Just try to get them about the same size and you'll be okay. And then what we'll do once that's prepped is transfer it into our pan where we will cover it with cold fresh water and add a nice big spoon of salt. And then we'll wanna bring this up to a simmer on high heat. Because what we'll do once that comes to a simmer is cook that on medium low until our sweet potato is tender. As tested with the tip of a knife. And in case you're keeping score at home, mine took about 17 minutes. And then what we'll do once done is drain those very, very thoroughly. And then we'll simply return those to the pan and mash them until very smooth. And that is pretty much it for our sweet potato prep. All right, we don't need to add anything else. No salt, no butter, no milk. Just pure sweet mashed sweet potato. And then very important, we need to let this cool down to room temp before we use it. All right, so make sure you do this step first. And then once that's cooled down, we'll transfer that into a mixing bowl and toss in a little touch of brown sugar, as well as some buttermilk or if you want, regular milk. But I think the tanginess of the buttermilk really works perfectly with the sweet potatoes. And then all we need to do is mix this together with a spatula. And once combined, we'll simply set that aside and move on to our flour butter mixture. So in this bowl, I have some self-rising flour, which as I've tried to convince you over the years, is one of the secrets to beautiful biscuits, since it has the perfect amount of baking powder and salt milled right in. And then to our self-rising flour, we're going to grate in some frozen butter. Oh yeah, you heard me. We're going to pop our butter into the freezer before we make this. And then grate it in using a cheese grater. And about every third to a half stick, we'll want to stop. And toss that with a fork to coat it in the flour. Because we don't want it all clumping together. So we will continue grating and forking. Forking and grating. Until it's all been introduced. And normally we do this by adding all the butter at once and then using a pastry blender to cut the butter into the flour. But this is basically doing the same thing. And once this dough gets mixed, we're actually gonna end up with slightly bigger pieces of butter in there, which is gonna work a little better for this recipe, since we are including that mashed sweet potato, which sort of throws things off a little bit. But anyway, like I said, we're gonna grate that butter in, mixing it occasionally with the fork. And once it's all in there, what we'll do is make a well in the center and transfer in our sweet potato mixture which again, you made sure was completely cooled. Because if our sweet potato mixture is warm, it's gonna melt that butter, and we will not get the same awesome flaky texture. And then what we'll do once our sweet potatoes have been combined with our flour mixture, is grab our fork and start mixing this together using sort of a tossing folding motion until it just about almost starts coming together into a shaggy dough. But not quite a shaggy dough, because I much prefer the biscuit method where we finish mixing the dough on the work surface. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stop right at this point, where if we want, we could kind of smush it together. And I'm gonna go ahead and transfer that onto my table. And then what we're gonna attempt to do with our bare hands is somehow press this together into some sort of rectangular shape, about an inch and a half or so high. And while we're doing that, we'll wanna completely ignore how terrible this looks. Okay, so just sort of press it and push it as shown, not worrying about spots that seem very wet or others that seem very dry. And then once we've somehow wrestled that mixture into a rectangular shape like this, we will grab our bench scraper and give this a tri-fold, just like we're folding up a letter, which I just realized many of you younger viewers may have never done. 
But anyway, we'll fold that in thirds and then give the whole thing a turn like this. At which point we will repeat step one and somehow press this back into a rectangular shape. Sort of gathering and pressing in all those loose pieces. And at any time if your hands start sticking to the wetter spots, feel free to dust on a little flour. And the only difference between the second pressing and the first pressing is we're going to press this out a little thinner, maybe to a thickness of about an inch. And then once we have it looking about like this, we'll use our bench scraper to scoop up any loose bits and add that to the center. And then what we'll do is give it one last trifold, and then we will turn it again. And the theory here is by the time this is all formed, our dough is perfectly mixed, but not overmixed. And thanks to those particles of butter and the folding we did, we are going to have a fabulously flaky biscuit with lots of beautiful buttery layers. And now that all our folding and turning is done, all we need to do is press this back out into our final shape, which for me is going to be a rectangle about an inch high. And then once we're happy with our final shape and our surface is relatively smooth, we'll want to take a knife or our bench scraper and trim off just a little bit of the sides. And I know you're not supposed to use a knife on a metal table, but I did. I'm not pressing that hard. And if you want, you could use the bench scraper, but I do prefer the knife. And it's these nice clean cuts that allows our biscuits to rise to their maximum height. All right, if your edges are smeared together, it just doesn't work as well. And yes, of course you're going to push all those scraps together and make one extra mutant biscuit that you will eat in private. And then once trimmed, I'm going to go ahead and cut this into eight pieces. All right, this recipe usually makes 12 normal size biscuits or eight gigantic size biscuits, which by the way work way better for leftover turkey sandwiches. And on the other hand, you could even make more than 12. All right, this recipe could also make 24 gorgeous little mini biscuits. So you make these as big or small as you want. The only thing that's going to change a little bit is the baking time. But anyway, once those are portioned, we'll go ahead and transfer those onto a Silpat line baking sheet. And of course, we'll space those as evenly as possible. And then before we pop these in the oven, we will do one optional, but totally mandatory step. And that's going to be to brush the tops with a little bit of melted butter. So suit yourself, but I highly recommend it, and it helps these brown up nicely. And then once those tops have been brushed with butter, we will go ahead and transfer this into the center of a 425 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes or until beautifully browned and looking like one of the greatest batches of biscuits you've ever seen. I mean, come on, look at those. And as promised, thanks to those nice clean cuts, as well as our proprietary techniques, we've gotten some beautiful height, not to mention provocative layering. And then as difficult as it might be, we really do want to let these cool down a little bit before we tear into them. And to distract you, what we can do while we're waiting is give these one more light brushing with butter, just like they always do in biscuit country. So I went ahead and brushed on a little more butter and let these cool down until they were perfectly warm, at which point I serve one up along with some pomegranate butter, which I will tell you how to do on the blog. So let me go ahead and split this open so we can show off our buttery layering and I'm going to spread some of that pomegranate butter onto the bigger piece. And that, my friends, was just an insanely perfect biscuit. Okay, crispy flaky biscuits aren't that hard to make. And tender moist biscuits aren't that hard to make. But a crispy flaky tender moist biscuit is not that easy. And that's exactly what we had here. Which reminds me, why am I eating this open face? Let me put these pieces together so I can double my flaky crispiness. And while this butter spread really was magnificent, Imagine these used for like a ham sandwich, or as I already mentioned, some leftover turkey and cranberry sauce. Oh yeah. But anyway, how you enjoy these is going to be up to you. You guys are, after all, the Ponce de Leones of what the Brits call scones. So I hope you explore all kinds of different pairing options. But anyway, that's it. My take on sweet potato biscuits. Whether you're going to make these after your feast with leftovers, or make them beforehand to serve with your turkey, thereby blowing the minds of your guests. I really do hope you give these a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.